You come to us here because we don't make you hang around for the answer. If you want the facts on how big the Sun is, here they are. Size, mass and a little comparison to Earth. That should satisfy most bits of school homework or give you the answers to a pub quiz. So off you now pop, you who is not curious of mind, hungry of spirit, nor thirsty for knowledge. The rest of this episode is a little deeper dive for those actually curious about the size of the Sun. For thousands of years it was really hard for humanity to figure out how big the Sun was because, you know, we didn't even have pencils for much of it, let alone space probes to know for sure. But mathematics being the language of science, and there being a lot of civilizations that were phenomenally good at maths, it became a bit of a puzzle to solve through the ages. And the ancient Greeks, of course, got angry by unsolved puzzles. Hipparchus, whose incredible astronomy computer we did a show about that's probably in the show notes below, used a technique called parallax to calculate a rough distance to the moon. And that was then the yardstick to start measuring the whole solar system, the galaxy, and even the whole universe. Because once you know the distance to something, it's only a few mathematical tricks away from knowing its size too. But the error margins were so wide that for a couple of thousand years, all attempts were, well, they were really inaccurate. Probably a good job the ancient Greek civilization waned, because imagine how angry they'd be by the 18th century when they still didn't have a good answer. They wouldn't have calmed down until astronomers realized that Venus passing in front of the Sun in 1761 would give them all the figures they needed to work out a pretty accurate figure for the size of the Sun and its distance. From then until now, it's just been a case of refining that last 3% error in Monsieur Lalande's calculations from 1761. And we now have figures that are accurate far beyond any practical purposes. And would you know, the distance to the Sun was exactly 1 AU. That's a joke for the astronomers. In 1976, the International Astronomical Union created a new alternative to miles, kilometers, or light years for distances in the solar system called the Astronomical Unit, or AU for short. And an AU was defined as the distance from the Sun to the Earth. So we're 1 AU from the Sun, Jupiter is 5 AU from the Sun, and planetary pretender Pluto is 39 AU from the Sun. So the figure we now have is that the Sun is 1.3927 million kilometers across. That's 109 times the Earth's diameter. And that means we could fit, wait for it, 1.3 million Earths in the space the Sun occupies. So that's big. Even this graphic showing the sizes of the major bodies in the solar system doesn't do it justice because although the dimensions of the planets look significant, the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn, the ice giants Uranus and Neptune, and the rocky planets Earth, Venus, Mars and Mercury, all combined make up 0.2% of the matter in the solar system. The Sun makes up the other 99.8%. But the Sun is also quite ordinary. It's a yellow dwarf star, although look at it above the Earth's atmosphere and it looks more white than yellow. And while it's a monster compared to the Earth and the other planets, as its name suggests, it's very small compared to many of the stars we see elsewhere in our Milky Way galaxy. But these yellow dwarves make up about 10% of all the stars out there. So stars like our own Sun are quite common. But it will one day grow bigger, much bigger, when it begins to run out of fuel in a few billion years, so no need to worry about it just yet, it'll bloat up engulfing Mercury, Venus, maybe even the Earth itself, before it compresses down under the relentless force of gravity into a white hot cinder of its former self, slowly cooling over billions or even trillions of years. What's left of its atmosphere will drift away, illuminated as a beautiful and unique nebula. So in a sense, our star, or its surviving atmosphere at least, will become huge in billions of years time as that nebula expands over many light years for any intelligent life that might exist to stare back on and enjoy the beautiful view, blissfully unaware that technology capable life once flourished on a mote of dust around a little star 
that no longer exists.